Hey, what's up everyone? It's Chris. Um, this is the process throwdown event two. Uh, about to start 2A here. Uh, I did it this morning because I was uh, sick over the weekend and had a yacht party and stuff. So here we go. 75 air squats to start us off. Um, I don't know about you guys, but the air squats wasn't really that bad. Um, I do that scoopy arm thing uh, that Ant showed us in that uh, video, but I did it before um, he showed it. So uh, good for me, I guess. Um, I make a point to make a little pause at the top of every squat when I stand up, just to make sure that the rep is good. Um, if I'm rushing through it, I tend to not go to full extension, so I do a little bit of a hip pop at the top there. Um, otherwise, kind of swam through it pretty well. Um, counted in my head, single by single. Uh, I was hearing news of you guys kind of like losing count, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't doing any of that because if uh, my mind starts to wander, then um, I would do the same. Also, I guess I didn't intend to, but I guess I'm squatting in sync with the song. So that's nice, I guess. Coming up at the end here. Um, felt pretty good going through at this pace at about one minute and 15 seconds. Going straight into the deadlift. So as you can see, the deadlift bar um, is right underneath the pull-up bar for the toes to bar so that I can transition super quick. Um, I have a tendency to walk around and waste time on the transition. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't tempting that at all. Uh, also, um, there's a bit of a slope there on the rig, so I used the white change plates to kind of stop the bar um, if it wanted to have a tendency to roll away from me, which again would make me um, take more time to reset the bar. Uh, I was making a point to break up the deadlifts early, which I think I did in the round of eight, um, but through six here I felt okay, but toes the bar I'm particularly good at, I think. Oh no, I did break up in half for the six. But for toes to bar, I went ahead and tried to go unbroken all the way um, because my breathing rhythm with this is pretty good in the sense that when I arch, I take a big breath in and I breathe out when I meet my feet to the bar. And that seems to give me a pretty good rhythm in terms of like recoverability um, when cycling through those reps. So that felt pretty good for me. The deadlifts at 93 kg weren't too bad. But I knew that with uh, the high volume that I was going for, I was looking to aim for the round of 12 or 14. Um, that would light up my back pretty good. Like I said, I'm, I'm still recovering from a cold, so I knew that my body wouldn't be at 100%, so I wanted to break it up early as possible. Um, if you can see on my right bicep, I do have a, a new heart rate monitor. Um, that one's by Skosh. It's pretty good. I don't really dig the chest straps any much um, anymore because it's just really restrictive for me and it tends to slide down, especially when I'm doing jumping motions like a box jump or double unders. So um, I found that this bicep strap, number one, is really secure um, on all movements and number two is quite accurate. Um, comparing it to a chest strap that I'd been using before, it almost is like one for one the same. There might be a few seconds here or there. Um, when my heart rate spikes up and the uh, armband monitor is like a half a second or a second uh, behind, but it's pretty spot on nonetheless and it's really great at tracking the workout uh, over time. So I highly recommend it if you're looking for an alternative to a, a chest strap heart rate monitor, but want something more accurate than let's say a wrist watch monitor like a, uh, an Apple watch. One, two, Three, I lost count. So that's a set of three, followed by one, two, three. That's six now. I keep mixing the grip. I was trying hook grip at first, but um, it wasn't gonna work out for me. I'd, I'd blow up my, my grip if I wasn't doing anything except for a mixed grip. All right, so that's your round of 12. You can see I'm starting to take a few steps back just to get my breath. Um, I'm being as mindful of that as possible so that I don't waste too much time in those trans transitions. Um, but really keeping the bar directly underneath the pull-up bar really helped me out with this workout. So still feeling good with an unbroken set through, um, I guess that's the round of 12.
But this is where I started really feeling my uh, forearms start to burn here. Uh, and my grip starting to fatigue out. Even with the mixed grip, I was starting to feel my forearms feel pretty stony. Um, you know that feeling where you just can't grip anymore and uh, the pump is real. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, and I do feel some global fatigue, but to be honest, the workout uh, was pretty excellently programmed in the sense that nothing was being taxed more than any other. For example, after the air squats, maybe like two, the first two reps of the deadlift felt a little bit sticky, um, but you know, balancing the deadlift with toes to bar and even starting up the burpee box jump overs, which I would do in about six and a half minutes, uh, really wasn't too bad for me. I mean, it sucked. Let's get that straight. I don't want to do three minutes of burpee box jump overs again anytime soon, but at the same time, um, my body was ready enough to get it done. That was my first break on the toes to bars. So I think that was a, round, um, a set of eight followed by his final set of six here. And then kind of mentally prepping myself for a round of 16 deadlifts. Um, I didn't think I'd get far enough to make it to 16 deadlifts. So uh, I was stoked about having enough time, but also, um, not so stoked about actually having to do 16 deadlifts uh, within that minute. And you can see that my breaks are going to take a little bit longer every time. Um, part of that was just me being a little bit of a bitch, I'll be honest. But also, I didn't want to blow myself out um, for the burpee box jump. Of course, we do have the two minutes of rest, but still. Um, Two minutes really isn't that much time after a seven minute AMRAP where you're going like an eight or nine um, trying to get up on the leaderboard. Leaderboard. So just enough to get a few toes to bar in. I got one, two, and I didn't count that third one. Um, I reached the pull up bar right past the zero mark um, on seven minutes. But anyway, Oh, check this out. Um, smart move. Uh, I kind of kept the deadlift bar in place with those um, small change plates so that way I can move the box over um, without the bar kind of rolling um, towards me during the burpee box jump overs in a tight space. Um, thought of that on the spot and I thought I was a smart person for doing that. Um, so kudos to me. And there's your box. So that's what tape's for. I got about a minute and 15 left and yeah, just like I thought, by the time the burpee box jump over started, I was not recovered much. Um, I want to take a little drink of Gatorade here, but uh, with my stomach not liking to have like food and fluids um, during exercise, it was just enough to like wet my whistle. Again, this was just this morning and right now my back feels kind of tender. Um, I'm at the ripe old age of 35 years old where any deadlift session I'll feel for the next three days. So tomorrow for um, our aerobic conditioning uh, session, I'll probably take it quite easy um, and take those uh, loads light for, uh, I believe, the dumbbell switches. Uh, so I'm rolling out my forearms in the box because, yeah, they just feel pretty spent. Um, when I put my palms down to catch myself in the burpees, that's where I felt you know, the big stretch of my forearms. Um, so I just wanted to leave it a bit ahead of that. 10 seconds to go. Um, and yeah, not completely recovered, but enough to just like, kind of mentally prepare myself for three minutes of nonstop burpee box jump overs. Now I've been practicing this method here where I step up and then I pivot and step down and take a long step down with that second foot to get into the next burpee. Um, that felt pretty efficient. The only thing I wish I could have had here in terms of resources was um, a narrower box. Uh, I don't know if you can tell from this angle, but this box is a regular plyometric box where the top is uh, basically square. So it doesn't have the rectangular dimensions that I would like for a movement like a burpee box jump over. So I knew going into this that I'd have to take broader jumps to the box and kind of a more deliberate pivot than if I'd use um, something like a traditional wooden plyo box. Um, that being said, I mean, I didn't really have any other excuse um, 
for me being kind of slow here. So if I had done this again, I'd probably try to start with those first four reps at like a hotter pace than I did here because those first few reps really sets the tone. You can always kind of pull back after those first four reps a bit, um, but if you start slow with a movement like this, you're just gonna end up holding onto it even to the end of the time, which I basically did here. I don't know about you guys, but the hardest part here was knowing that, all right, if I got 12 in the first minute, that meant that doing the math, I should aim to get 36. And just the thought of doing 24 more of these damn burpees, um, it's not a pleasant thought to carry around for two more minutes. Also not really being too mindful of the tape. Um, just like with the open standard, uh, the tape, you should straddle it at the bottom of the burpee, but um, it seems like most people should be able to naturally do that without thinking about it. Um, so I'm glad I was able to hit that standard here. Um, as you can see in this final minute, me landing on the box, I'm absorbing that with a really deep squat, which I wish I didn't sit into. I wish I could just kind of just pivot right when I landed. Um, and also turn a bit more in that landing so I wouldn't have to pin it so hard. But uh, once you just get tired like that and you get stuck into just survival mode, you tend not to try to change your technique too much. If I was more willing to, uh, I would take at least the last 30 seconds to go super fast on the burpees, but I'm um, just kind of looking at where I'm here, I just, it seemed like it wasn't really in me. You can see me doing a few more reps here where I'm actually jumping into um, the box and jumping off, but I wasn't really saving enough time. Ending at 33 reps. Um, on lot up, this would be a very hard effort, I would say. Not all out, um, but uh, hard enough. So, for part A, uh, finish through the round of 14 plus 16 burpees and two toes to bar. Um, and then here, 33 burpee box jump burpees at 24 inches. Um, guys, this is an awesome new workout. Like I said, um, everything got worked out and I didn't feel any specific fatigue. I was bottlenecking my movements uh, throughout um, the 12 minute period. Um, that two minute recovery time was sneaky in the sense that it wasn't really going to be enough anyway, but it gave me enough to figure things out. Um, and there's me saying goodbye. Uh, and this is me saying goodbye. Thanks for two weeks of an awesome throwdown, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to go check out what my kids are up to because they are watching Paw Patrol and they should be taking a shower before bedtime. So without further ado, 